you're probably familiar with the human genome project that happened like way back in 2000 and 2001 and the idea there was to sequence the human genome we've learned so much about biology and disease by being able to compare the genomes of multiple species so one of the projects I'm working on right now is kind of the, the, a, a huge extension of that. Rather than just looking at genomes, we're looking at what's called uh, the proteome. The vast majority of the, of the work that goes into keeping you alive inside your cell is what's called protein interactions. So what happens is you have two different types of proteins wandering around, floating around in your cell. They come together, they exchange a few atoms in these ginormous molecules, and then they disengage. There are 30,000 different types of proteins in your cells. Each protein can interact with perhaps a few dozen other proteins. So what we have is this ginormous network of protein interactions. Now there's a protein interaction network for you and me and they're, almost, they're virtually identical because we're both human. Chimps also have a protein interaction network and it's slightly different than ours. And the further away you go from us, you know, chimps, horses, mouse, rat, fish, the farther away you move away from humans, the more different the protein interactions and also the proteins themselves, the more different they are. Comparing these networks of interactions of proteins is going to teach us an enormous amount about biology and disease that we can't otherwise learn. For example, to help cure a particular type of cancer, what you need to do is you need to kill the cancer cells and stop them from multiplying. And one way you can do that is you can block a particular protein interaction. If you could block the production of, of ATP, if you're, or if you can block how glucose gets into a cancer cell, or, if, or even if you can block the byproducts from getting out, that will eventually kill the cancer cell. And if you can do that in a way that, that kills the cancer cells without killing normal cells, then you've effectively stopped that tumor from growing and effectively cured that form of cancer. So by studying the network, you can learn which interactions are the best targets for drugs to block those interactions and kill the cancer cell. The reason this is interesting now is because comparing networks is much, much more difficult from a computer science perspective than comparing genes because there's no string of letters to follow. There are these amorphous networks of connections. So what we have to do is we have to create computer programs that try to find the best matching in some reasonable amount of time. And the quality of the match that you find depends on how good your algorithm is. So about five years ago, I was a member of the group right here at UCI in computer science. We found them a solution 30 times better than anyone else had ever found in 2010. We now have a solution that's about five or six times better than five years ago. So it's another, another 25 to 50 percent better than everybody else is capable of at the moment. But more than that, we have evidence to suggest that you can't get much better than this, so we've kind of reached the pinnacle. So that's, that's exciting, and that is a paper that's going to be published in, uh, in an, within the next few months.